Hello, this is Max. A living car saves its owner at the right moment during a derby and then competes in a NASCAR race. You can subscribe to the channel after watching. It helps us a lot in realizing the content. The film commences by introducing Harvey, a resilient white Volkswagen Beetle with a storied past in the racing world. Though Herbie suffered extensive damage that led to its abandonment in Crazy Dave's junkyard, it surprises everyone by displaying signs of life. Prettier too. It vehemently resists being unloaded and even retaliates when provoked by Dave. Despite Dave's attempts to destroy it, Herbie escapes and narrowly avoids being crushed when a tiger goes flat. Meanwhile, we meet Margaret Payton, known as Maggie, who is at her graduation ceremony. Maggie hails from a family with a racing legacy but is denied entry into the racing world. Unlike her brother Ray, Ray's racing career is in decline, causing tension at home. Maggie's room is adorned with reminders of her family's racing achievements. Maggie's father, Peyton, apologizes for not celebrating her graduation properly and offers her a car as a gift. They visit Dave's junkyard, where Maggie initially considers a green Nissan but ultimately chooses Horby after it crushes the Nissan. Horby, seemingly fond of Maggie, is brought home and inspected before Maggie takes it for a spin. Inside Herbie, Maggie finds a mysterious letter urging her to take care of Harvey and hints at the car's unusual abilities. When Maggie starts the car, Herbie takes her to a repair shop owned by her old friend, Kevin. Harvey insists on immediate repairs, and Kevin, who has feelings for Maggie, agrees to help. During a test drive to Fairplex, Herbie's unexpected performance on the highway draws attention. At Fairplex, Maggie tries to disown Herbie to avoid embarrassment when she is mistaken as the owner of the battered car. <laughs> Meanwhile, the racing world buzzes about a cocky racer named Razor Trip Murphy. Feeling that Herbie has brought her nothing but embarrassment, Maggie decides to leave Herbie behind, but the car's horn continues blaring. Frustrated, Maggie inadvertently causes an oil spray when attempting to silence Herbie. Inside Herbie's trunk, Maggie discovers a helmet and racing suit with the name Max. She puts them on, and Herbie, with the helmet, pushes her into the car. When Trip mocks Herbie, the car retaliates by damaging Trip's car, leading to a challenge to race. Reluctantly, Maggie races with Herbie, and the old car performs exceptionally well. This victory motivates Maggie to pursue racing seriously and Harvey impresses with remarkable maneuvers. They defeat Trip, humiliating him. Get that camera out of my face. Back at the workshop, Maggie confides in Kevin, believing Harvey is truly alive and connected to her, while Kevin thinks Maggie is denying her own racing abilities. Meanwhile, race sponsors began dropping out one by one after his disappointing practices. Sally, a representative from Bispro, the only remaining sponsor, showed a news broadcast of Harvey beating Trip in the white buggy number 53. Peyton, Maggie's father, realized that the car he had bought for Maggie was involved. Disappointed and concerned for her safety, Peyton had previously forbidden Maggie from racing due to a near-fatal accident in her past. Maggie had to lie to her father about the situation, saying that Kevin's friend Max had borrowed Herbie for racing. Peyton felt guilty for getting angry at Maggie and apologized before returning home, unaware that Herbie had taken an interest in Sally's beautiful yellow new Beetle car. On the other hand, Tripp's mental state was shaken by his defeat, affecting his reputation and career. I can't deal with this right now, Larry. His brother and manager, Larry, advised him not to dwell on the unofficial match, but Tripp insisted on a rematch. He proposed a two-day open race with a substantial prize to entice Razor, the owner of the White Beetle car, to participate. Tripp declared that if he won, the White Beetle car must be destroyed. I'm gonna exterminate this bug. Kevin presented his engine design to make her be more stable on the racetrack, but Maggie couldn't stop thinking about her father, and part of her still felt reluctant to return to racing. An argument between Maggie and Kevin was interrupted when a newspaper page announcing a competition fell near Herbie. Herbie flew the newspaper to ensure Maggie and Kevin could read it clearly. 
Kevin convinced Maggie to participate in the race just this one time, as the prizes offered were tempting, and Maggie's family was facing financial difficulties due to race sponsors dropping out. Some of the money could also help fix Kevin's workshop. Maggie reluctantly agreed to participate. Together with Kevin, she worked tirelessly on Herbie's body, repairing the interior and the engine in just a few days. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tripp and Larry were busy analyzing how an old Beetle car managed to beat Tripp's race car. The scene shifted to Maggie overhearing her father's conversation with Sally, which revealed that Ray wasn't naturally talented for racing. Sally had been doing her best to help Prey survive in the racing world. It became clear that Bispro had also terminated its sponsorship contract with Ray Payton Jr. Payton asked for one last chance for Ray at the Speedway race, and if he didn't win, he'd be willing to give up on his son. This revelation fueled Maggie's determination to win the prize from the competition. On the day of the open race competition, Tripp, who knew Maggie and realized she was Ray's sister, greeted her but was surprised to learn that she was there to sponsor Max, the Beetle car driver who was actually Maggie herself. Tripp wanted to meet Max, but Maggie claimed Max was meditating and couldn't be disturbed. The race began, and Herbie advanced to the top five, with Maggie, A's Max, gaining numerous fans thanks to her impressive stints on the track. Herbie surpassed all the race cars one by one and emerged as the sole champion on the first day, setting up a showdown against Tripp the next day. After the race, Herbie unexpectedly encountered Sally's yellow beetle again, but the yellow car didn't respond. And I want... Later, Kevin gave Maggie a necklace with a pendant bearing the number 53 as a reward for the day's success, hoping it would bring luck in the upcoming race. Their romantic moment was interrupted by Tripp's arrival. Tripp praised Maggie and offered her a chance to try his racing car. Herbie sensed something was amiss and grew jealous as Maggie enjoyed Tripp's car. While Maggie was having fun, Tripp attempted a sinister plan to sabotage Herbie's engine, which failed. Herbie retaliated by spraying oil on Tripp's face and hitting him with a cap, foiling Tripp's plan. However, Tripp didn't give up and made another offer. The winner of the race would claim the losing car, and Maggie agreed to this challenge. The next day, Maggie's best friend, Charisma, came to visit her just as Maggie was getting ready for the race. Maggie found herself lying to Charisma, claiming that she had an appointment to watch her boyfriend race. This news piqued the curiosity of Maggie's family, and Peyton, Ray, and Charisma came to the race location to see Maggie's boyfriend in action. Unfortunately, on that day, Harby was sulking because he didn't want Maggie to trade him for Tripp's car. Harby deliberately slowed down and stopped before reaching the finish line, which left Maggie furious. She took off her helmet in front of the audience, including her family and charisma. Kevin tried to console her, explaining that there was still a chance in another match. However, the deal had already been made. Tripp had the right to take and destroy Harby. Kevin, upon learning about the bet, thought that Maggie had betrayed Herbie, and Peyton was also disappointed. He told Maggie that he no longer cared about honesty. Payback time, Bob. The only person Maggie felt proud of at that moment was Charisma, who fully supported Maggie's pursuit of her passion rather than being forced into something she didn't love. Charisma's words reignited Maggie's excitement. She went to retrieve Herbie who had been taken to the Gladiator car arena and mistreated by other cars. The owner of the arena offered to give Herbie to Maggie for free if she could get him out of the arena herself. Maggie entered the arena to find Herbie in a helpless state. However, when he saw Maggie in danger, Herbie sprang into action, saving Maggie and ejecting Crash, who had been tormenting them. Well, that's ridiculous. Maggie and Herbie managed to escape, despite facing several obstacles, including a giant truck. Maggie arrived at Kevin's workshop with a severely damaged Herbie. She begged Kevin to save Herbie and apologized for her selfishness in risking Herbie at the Speedway racetrack. Meanwhile, Ray was doing his best to qualify for the next L race, and he succeeded. However, after the race, his car lost control, and the doctor determined that the vision in Ray's left eye was no longer functional. Fine. 
The doctor advised Ray not to participate in the Nextel race that week to prevent a more serious accident. As Ray needed a replacement driver for the race, he suggested Maggie take his place. However, Peyton was still reluctant to let Maggie race. Maggie pleaded with her father, emphasizing that racing was in her blood, much like her mother. She reassured him that she would not be hurt in this race. Sorry. Additionally, bad news came from the supply at Kevin's workshop. Spare parts for Herbie couldn't be sent because Kevin had not paid off the previous bill. Fortunately, Ray arrived with his fully equipped team to remodel Herbie and assured Maddie not to worry about their father's concerns. The next day, as the defending champion, Tripp was determined to maintain his title. Tripp was surprised to see Herbie's presence, as he believed Herbie had been destroyed by Larry. He's mad at me. He's mad at me. Before the race, Maggie had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Herbie to strengthen their connection. She walked onto the track and received a warm welcome from the fans. Herbie was the only Volkswagen Beetle allowed to enter the NASCAR Nextel Cup. Peyton watched Maggie on television and hoped he could provide direct support at the arena. Let's go, let's go. All the racers prepared to warm up after hearing the signal, and the real race began. Maggie initially fell behind but refused to give up. She used a nearby car as a springboard for Herbie to overtake a few cars. Peyton joined the audience at the location to watch his daughter in action, and his team efficiently completed the pit stops to keep Herbie competitive. In the final 18 laps, Tripp took the lead but was gradually overtaken by Maggie. However, several other cars attempted to surround and surpass Herbie, making Maggie increasingly pessimistic about continuing the race. A familiar voice in the distance cheered Maggie, renewing her determination. She managed to escape the encirclement by driving over an obstructing car, even though Herbie had an oil leak. Kevin borrowed an oil pan from Sally's car to save Herbie, cautioning Maggie to avoid collisions as much as possible. Maggie told Herbie that she didn't care about the race's outcome as long as she didn't lose him. Touched by her words, Herbie accelerated before the pit stop inspection was over. Maggie and Herbie swiftly overtook several cars, leaving only Tripp's car at the front. The audience's attention focused on the intense chase between Maggie and Tripp. To salvage his pride, Tripp resorted to cheating, repeatedly trying to corner Herbie against a field wall. However, in one of his attempts to hit Herbie, Tripp ended up overturning his own car, blocking Herbie's path. Tensions rose among the audience as it seemed impossible to dodge at such high speeds and close range. Miraculously, Herbie leaped over the fence, leading Maddie to a victorious first place at the finish line. Peyton, Charisma, and Ray were immensely proud of Maggie, while Tripp's furious outburst made everyone think he was crazy to think the car was alive. Kevin approached Maggie, and Herbie helped bring them closer together. In the film's conclusion, Peyton appeared to be advising someone not to forget about a big race and to return home safely. It was revealed that Peyton was speaking to Herbie, who had fallen in love with Sally's car, which, like Herbie, could blink. If you are interested in such films, please proceed to the next video on the screen and also share your thoughts about this film in the comments. Give us a like and subscribe. Goodbye.